Hi, welcome everybody and thank you for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I'm Kristen Stampini and this is Stamp TV, your best resource for everything in real estate. We'll have tips and tricks for buyers and sellers as well as real estate agents. So today, I'm gonna talk about hiring your very first assistant. So stay tuned until the end of this video and I will be providing you with a detailed checklist on what to do when you're actually hiring your first assistant that's gonna help you through the process. If you have any questions through this video today, please comment below. Okay, so let's get started. Once you have an overflow of business and you aren't able to take and get back to leads and take additional appointments and you aren't able to work with more buyers and sellers and you just can't do anything else, you know that it's probably time to leverage in your business so that you can make sure to get bigger. So you feel that things are falling through the cracks, there's all sorts of different things that are going on, and you aren't able to do rainmaker activities or money producing activities in your business. So you need to delegate everything so that you can do the business. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, wow, you know, you go on a roller coaster ride, really up, really down, and you continue to do that throughout your business because as you get really, really busy, you have to stop doing revenue generating activities just so you can attend to the people that you're working at with your business. So what can an assistant do for you so that you can work more with buyers and sellers? Basically, they can manage your CRM and your database. They can help you to make sure no leads at all are falling through the cracks. They can also help you identify who's actually ready to buy or sell. So they can pretty much manage your entire database. They can also do the creative end of the real estate business. So they can help you with flyers and they can do websites and anything like that. And they can also help you with listing management, everything to do with listing management and social media. They can actually be a service coordinator. They can create systems and processes for you. So they can do a numerous things in the business. So I hear realtors that say, you know, I can't afford an assistant. And they go and they hire another realtor, okay? Which basically then they split commissions with. So really, if you're not doing and not able to grow your business because of the things that I mentioned earlier, you can't afford not to hire an assistant. So next you have to figure out what you're going to do if you're going to hire an in-house assistant or if you're going to hire a virtual assistant. And both of those, either one, have good things and bad things to them. Now ZipRecruiter, you know, stated as April 1st, 2019, the average annual pay for an entry level real estate assistant was $52,815 a year. Wow. Who can, can you afford that? You know, and if you can't, then, and obviously in your, you know, local situation, it's going to be different. So if you decide to hire a virtual assistant that's um, not located in the United States, you know, you can actually hire them for much less. And, and the reason being is because real estate assistants, not in the US, in different countries, the cost of living is much different. So you're able to, to hire less because of that just alone. And you can hire virtual assistants directly through a company such as onlinejobs.ph, and those are in the Philippines. Also Upwork and Facebook also has, you know, places that you can hire virtual assistants in different countries. You can also hire virtual assistants, you know, a lot of people hire them through India and other countries as well. The thing is, is 
you have to do the screening process and the hiring and the training and everything yourself. And you got to try to figure out how to hire the virtual assistants, or you can go through a company that will actually do the screening and processing and hiring for you. And they'll also provide support. So you have to decide. And obviously, if you hire them directly, they're less expensive, but it is a lot more risk for you. So an in-house assistant obviously can do a lot of things such as even copying and doing things that a virtual is not able to do. But actually, a virtual can do almost anything that an in-house assistant can do as well. So you just have to decide on which one is going to be better for your business. So if you would like the checklist of how to hire your first assistant of everything that you need to do, then email me to the link below in this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and definitely subscribe. So we really appreciate you joining us today on Stamp TV. And again, weekly, I'm going to be providing tips and tricks, everything in real estate to buyers and sellers and real estate agents. So thank you for joining me today. Bye.